What's going on? I'm Dan, this is my shop, and today I'm making the Sliding Cowboy. If you're gonna have something inspire you, you could do a lot worse than this two-toned, beautiful western shirt with its upper shoulders gloriously covered in dark material. And that was really the inspiration for this magnificent cabinet that will store wine glasses and liquor and inspire conversation over dinners for years to come. This glorious beast just needed to be built. And like any good woodworking process, it starts with breaking down those rough materials and making sure you have the parts that'll help you accomplish this perfect build. And look. I can even do three cuts at once. And if you're impressed with that, don't forget to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button in case you're new to YouTube. And when you're making a sliding cowboy, I prefer to use something that resembles a hedgehog angry on the prairie, ready to rip your hand off and illegal in Europe. Be careful with it, of course, because it can literally do that but it can also make perfect slides for your sliding door, which I cut to 3 8 of an inch on the top and an eighth of an inch on the bottom, just to make sure everything would slide perfectly. All right, so this is my edge, my interior edge after checking with that glass. The glass is 20 inches wide, so I made this 20 and a quarter but what we know now is that this is going to be the width of the partition because it's coming from the same three quarter inch material. And so I can easily just score a line there, make sure that's even. This is usually a lot more accurate than if you use any kind of other way to measure just because sometimes your plywood is a different size and therefore it can really change how you end up marking things. So now that I'm done marking those, I'm gonna use my shaper to cut these dados in here. You could absolutely do this with a router, just a normal router, and it would work really well. I can't really do it on my table saw because I don't have the width to run this board through. Um, and that seems like a really dangerous cut when you're going with lengthwise across a table saw, unless you have a really nice cross cut attachment or you're using a sled that's really dialed in. After finishing that tenon, I have a little bit of play in there, which is gonna be good for the glue up, just in case things need to adjust ever so slightly. Obviously it's back from where the sliding doors will be, that way there's clearance there. And then it's 20 and a quarter inches wide, so that way it fits the glass shelf that's gonna be utilized there. And two things you'll wanna make sure you bring when you're making a sliding cowboy are biscuits and strapping tape. Don't bother yourself with that blue tape. That strapping tape will make those 45s fit as crisp as those pants in the morning. So this is the carcass for the sliding cowboy. Of course, I still need to make the sliding doors that'll go in there, and that will really make this thing stand out and actually be a unique build here. And then I'm gonna build some basic storage for wine glasses that'll fit in there. And then this cowboy is going to be hitting the prairie. Now that I've finished the carcass, I'm gonna to go to these doors. And with the doors, um, they're really thin. And what I'm gonna do is actually cross lap the white oak with walnut. Then, once those are all glued together, I'll end up ripping down the exact size to fit in the slots for the sliding doors. 
it's important you take the time to look at which way that grain should go. You might not think it's a big deal, but people do care about it, especially if they're going to look at this thing for the next 100,000 years. If your joints don't perfectly match up, all you have to do is sandwich the two boards like this and run them through your planer along the same edge that is going to be jointed together and you will get a perfect edge every time. The cool thing about that trick is that even if your jointer isn't perfectly square, it's going to work. So you're not trying to close gaps that are never going to close because let's say your jointer fence is at 89.8 degrees or something like that. With this technique, it's always going to agree with the other joint on the board. So now it's time to get these glued up. Now to have places that sell really cool panel clamps, but those same places are also sold out of them right now. So I'm using my own homemade calls and hoping it'll flatten it and give me some pretty good flat panels to work with because this is kind of a critical component of the doors. So we'll see. And just like my process with the white oak, I'm checking out the grain orientation of these boards to make sure they're flat as the fields of Nebraska and to make sure they look pretty because that can be important too. During my woodworking, I like to watch a hockey match. Even though it might not be a cowboy's prerogative, it is mine. I'm not that off on purpose. Uh, I, I don't think we so what's going on in this last shift between Matthews and Darlene. And in case those boards didn't learn their lesson by having me scrape away the glue, I run them through this drum sander and then cut them apart with this track saw. I like to then walk around and show it who's boss and figure out which way's just the right orientation before I clamp it together and force them into a never ending hug that will make the doors not only beautiful but a reminder that to be together is always a good thing. Unless you really don't like the person, then it's probably a bad thing. After tickling the cupboard with this yellow piece of tape, I thought I'd check out how the doors look, opening and closing, and then marking out the tongues that would fit into the grooves that you can see there. Now the best way to go about this is to really just sneak up on those cuts using your table saw or a router. One thing you don't want to do is use a chisel to finish it off and have poor form and put the chisel through your finger, which is what I chose to do and what resulted in that beautiful looking bandage. Seven stitches and new friends in the ER. As so long as you recover from that, you can then continue with your work and ensure that the doors slide nice and crisply, just as these do. Then it's wise to sand them down and start drilling your pinholes for the different shelves. I don't have a lot of advice for pinholes except maybe get yourself one of these Craig things. They work really well and they tend to align the holes with little fuss or muss even if you're a one-handed bandit like myself. Quick tip, if you've never done iron on veneer, obviously this is an edge grain on the veneer and this is, would be end grain technically. And that's where you wanna make sure that is not your show front. Otherwise it would just look weird with the grain patterns. The other thing to keep in mind is you wanna first veneer the sides, not the show side, because that way you can actually cover up the slight edge of this veneer by doing that show side last. It'll overlap there and it'll look much better if you do it that way. And after all that ironing, you might be tempted to drink all the wine in your house, but I would recommend you don't yet fill up those glasses and instead check that the measurements will work for your hanging wine glass rack. Now I'm just using that solid white oak here 
and I'm cutting it to two and a half inches and then I'll bevel that thing at 22 degrees to make sure that it'll hold on to those dainty stems so that any old wine drinker can pull them out of there and fill up a cup. Especially if they just spent a night in the ER and then spent another afternoon ironing on veneer. And just as every horse needs a shoe, every cabinet needs a good base. And here I'm just ripping these white oak plywood two inch wide boards at 45 degrees and then taping and gluing them to each other. Now if you don't want to mess up your beautiful cast iron top on your table saw, I recommend using some of that blue tape that you didn't use earlier and covering up where your glue will squeeze out. It tends to work all right. Then you can tape the miters and add some strength with some more of that three quarter inch white oak plywood. And since I'm told I'm no longer allowed to spray paint under bridges and overpasses, I prefer to spray with a rattle can inside the interior of a newly minted cabinet. And even though I tend to use Osmo for most of my projects, this project and my chiseled finger demanded that the interior would get a rattle can application, but the exterior would still get Osmo so that anyone's glass wouldn't leave a ring after enjoying a lovely beverage from this cabinet. And after an obligatory wipe down, I'm gonna leave you with these beautiful pics before I let Dan wrap things up. Alright, so I've just wrapped up the Sliding Cowboy and I couldn't be happier and I think the folks I made it for are going to be pretty excited about it too. This thing opens up so easily with just a flick of the wrist and they can access their different bays to get their glasses, get whatever they want to store over here and then you can move that right back and they can access their wine glasses and whatever else they want to store under there. Now of course on the other side there's another bay for a couple different shelves and those are all adjustable as you saw from when I was cutting those holes in the video. Let's talk a couple things I learned from this build. Number one, don't put a chisel through your finger. I did that when I was cutting the tongues on this. Uh, my form was bad and I was a little bit rushing to finish the job and I slipped with the chisel and it went right through the underside of my finger. Thank you emergency room for fixing that. And I was just fine right back at it. It didn't hit anything major. So if you're concerned, mom, don't worry, I'm okay. But the other thing I was a little bit worried about was this walnut and oak veneer effectively, how I laminated the two together. I was worried it was going to cup too much because I just hadn't tried that before. I wasn't sure what it was going to look like. And with a track, with it going along a track here, I was nervous that if it cupped or anything like that, that it wouldn't be able to slide along that track. It did cup ever so slightly, but nothing that's going to inhibit the ability for this thing to work well. And as you can see, when I test that out, it slides perfectly well. So there's really no concern as far as that cupping goes. I'm good friends with the folks who I made this for, so I'm going to be able to see over time if that becomes an issue. The safe route would have been to go with just a plywood door, and you could basically do the same kind of veneering on it with some white oak. It would look okay, but I wanted to do solid wood. I think it looks a lot better, especially that finished stain. One of the things I'm most excited about is having learned how to make this sliding door mechanism. Now it's nothing complicated. You saw from my design and as I worked through it, some of those dimensions. Really the key thing is that your lower rail is less deep than your top guide. Because when you pull those in and out, you pop them in the top and then drop it on the bottom. Drop it like it's hot, I don't know. This has been a ton of fun learning how to do some new techniques and record them so hopefully you'll be inspired to try them yourself. Again, I know my videos aren't full tutorials, but if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in 
the comments below and I'll get right back to you on those. 